everyone. Today I'm here to do my third book review of the year. I feel like I'm doing great with reading already and it's only like mid-January and I'm pretty proud of myself. Now this could mean one of two things. This could mean I can either keep reading awesomely or I could do a nice book slump. That's usually what happens to me. I have like a good month of reading solid and then I'll hit a book slump. No clue why that just happens. But anyway, the book I'm going to be talking about today is Big Little Lies by Leanne. Moriarty. I may be saying that wrong. I don't know. I took this one up on a whim at the library. Um, I've heard really good things about this book. I've heard really good things about her other book called The, Hus the Husband's Secret. And I just finished The Girl on the Train. I really wanted a mystery book and I heard this was a mystery book but it really wasn't honestly. Either way I ended up really liking it. It's an adult book. It's a big one as well but um, I'm going to talk about it. I'm gonna tell you what I briefly thought about it, and then I'll talk about a spoil. And then I will talk about spoilers. And yeah, this is about three kindergarten mothers, Celeste, Madeline, and Jane, and it's all about their three lives in um, in Australia. Honestly, I didn't even know it took place in Australia, but it's about them and their all their kids are starting kindergarten, and there's kindergarten politics. Most of these books about kindergarten politics, and it's also um, there's been a murder, especially in the first part of the book, and. The whole thing is you figuring out who it is and I will say it's not really a mystery murder book. It's more about, if I could compare this book to anything, I'd compare it to Desperate Housewives and I've never watched Desperate Housewives but I got the vibe of that from it because it's all about these three moms and it's all about um, kindergarten politics which is a real thing. I said my son to school be dreading that because it's just going to be so much drunk going on but um, I really liked it needless to say even though it really wasn't a mystery per se. I mean somebody did die in this book and throughout the whole book you're thinking who died? Who died, but it's really in the back of your mind because they don't really make it the forefront of this book at all. It's more about um, these three women's life unfolding and the secrets they hide and what's going on behind closed doors, you know, and stuff like that. Overall, I like this book. I really did. Um, I feel like it was a little bit lengthier than it needed to be. That's not to say I didn't enjoy it. I, I couldn't wait to read it every night um, when I went to bed. I was like, oh, I hope, I wonder what's going on. I was excited to read it, but I still felt like it was a little bit lengthy. And yeah, I'm going to talk about these three characters real quick. So first we have... Madeline. Madeline is, um, I love Madeline and then I don't. Madeline, um, her whole thing going on with her is she is, um, she has an ex-husband who has a new wife now. I have a daughter that's starting in kindergarten the same age as her daughter with her now husband, Ed, and it's all about them um, crossing lines and stuff. Now her and her ex-husband share a daughter and she's 14 in this book and there's a bunch of stuff like that and the whole her whole thing, you know, is dealing with her daughter that's older that wants to spend one more time with her dad and their dad walked out on them when they were younger and now he's just back, you know. And Madeline is a great character. She's very, you know, she's um, the type of person that just says what she feels. She doesn't really have a filter, honestly. You know, she'll just say it. She doesn't care. And I like that about Madeline, but I didn't. I felt like I really wanted a depth to Madeline, but I felt like it, I felt her struggles with her daughter Abigail really wanted to be with her dad and her stepmom rather than her mom. You know, I really felt for her. I like I said, I like Madeline. I feel like she was a good, solid character, but I just want a little bit more oomph for her. Then we have Celeste. Celeste is a mother to two twin boys, and her and her husband um, have a quite difficult relationship. I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil it for you. It doesn't even say it in the jacket, so I'm not going to say anything. And Celeste probably has the biggest, a lot of secrets of them all. Celeste is going through a lot underneath everything. And Celeste is this beautiful, beautiful woman, and her husband's a beautiful man. Everybody just thinks they're happy and awesome, and just they have the perfect life, and Celeste doesn't. She knows that they don't have the perfect life. And then we have Jane. Jane is the new single mother that just moved into town with her son named Ziggy. And we have this whole mystery about Jane, really, about who Ziggy's father is. She doesn't tell anybody. You have this whole mystery behind it. Whenever they talk about her father, his father, she gets weird and stuff. But like I said, this book is all about kindergarten politics and, you know, about who's not inviting who to school parties and the gossip and all that stuff. I liked reading it. I'm not gonna lie. I liked reading it. I thought some of the moms were hilarious. I thought some of the moms were crazy. And yeah, so like I said, there is a murder in this. You get that from the very gist of the first page, I believe. And in each chapter, the end of the, or each end of like the couple chapters, there's always like a little interview thing here that the sergeant of the police officers um, talking about all of the whole um, thing, the murder, which happened on Trivia Night. And this whole book takes place, I think it starts out six months before Trivia Night, and then, you know, a little bit further, I'll say three months before Trivia Night, and then I'll have one hour before Trivia Night. So this huge thing happened on Trivia Night that somebody got killed, and these um, cops are trying to narrow down to it, but when they are, you know, um, talking to all these other moms of this school, you know, they're talking about, well, I think this started way back when, and they're like, 
basically, the, everyone, the cops were only more about all this, you know, kindergarten politics and stuff way before the trivia night had anything to do with it. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what this book is about, basically. <laughs> and it's also a lot about, there's a lot of real horrible things in this book that happen to a lot of people, I believe. And, you know, it's things, it's things that need to be written about, things that happen to people, but I felt like the author did a really good job with it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but this book touched bases on a lot of different topics, like hard-hitting topics that, you know, that are not very friendly, happy topics to talk about, but that need to be talked about, you know. We had the single mother who's been abandoned, that had a really horrible thing that happened to her. Then we have Madeline, whose daughter is just wanting to leave her and be with her dad, who abandoned them when she was younger, so she feels like that shouldn't be the case. She's the great mom that stayed with her. Why is she being punished for this? Then we have Celeste, who's suffering through something in her marriage that's really horrible. So we have all of these things that are layering beneath these females' friendships. Now, all three of these females are friends, but they have these each thing that they're suffering with on their own really and you know sometimes they voice it to one another but it's like they're suffering on their own and I feel like in this day and age there's a lot of people doing that you know I have friends that maybe went through things that I don't know about just as much as you do but I'm just to say I gave this book a three and a half out of five which I was surprised because a lot of people love this book they really do and they said it's their favorites I feel like I don't it's not one of my favorites I did enjoy reading it I had a good time reading it when I was done and I will say the one thing that really boosted it up for me was the whole shocker at the end if you've read the book you know I read that last night and I literally gasped out loud like I never do that reading a book I was like <gasps> Oh my gosh! I did not see that coming at all. Like, you could have hit me with a 10 foot pole, I wouldn't even know. That's how unsuspecting I was of that. And it was a great plot twist. I loved it. That really made it amazing for me. But I wanted just a little bit more and yet not enough. Or uh, I just wanted a little bit more to deal with that particular incident. But I feel like it was too lengthy, so that's why I gave it a, I think I would give it like a 3.75. We're going to be real technical here. So again, I will say, um, I would say read this if you're an adult. This hits a lot of hard-hitting topics, which I can't really mention without spoiling, but it's really not for young readers, honestly. It's got a lot of adult things in it. I'll say if you, you know, like reading about kid or politics, you like Desperate Housewives, you like a little bit of mystery thrown in there like a little bit and a great twister for an ending you need to read this it's a really good book talk a little bit about spoilers now but I will say I picked this up I wasn't I wasn't upset that I read it. I really will remember this fondly, and I know HBO is making a mini series out of this, which made me pick it up even more. Starring Nicole Kidman as Celeste, the mother of the twins, Shailene Woodley as Jane, the single mother, and Reese Witherspoon as Madeline, which I'm excited about. Um, the mom with the ex-husband and stuff like that. So I'm excited for the mini series. I think it's gonna be great. But yeah, let's talk about spoilers now. Let's talk about for Celeste. I feel like that's the big one. You know, Celeste was in this marriage with Perry and he physically abused her and it was horrible. I really felt horrible reading that. But I know while reading it that there's a lot of women and a lot of people in relationships that suffer things like that. And I felt horrible and I really felt for Celeste. I felt like Celeste, when I first read Celeste, she was glamorous and beautiful. I thought she's going to be so like just um, amazing. But the more you read Celeste, the more you feel for her, the more you want her to get out of this horrible relationship, the more you understand how amazing mom and character she is. You know, she, after every time she would, every time Perry hit her, she would feel like, you know, maybe she does deserve this. She has this perfect life with a lot of money and two amazing boys. Maybe, you know, a little bit of pain is okay in this marriage. And I was like, no, you don't deserve this. You're an amazing person and you don't, nobody, nobody deserves things like that. So, you know, um, that's just a horrible thing and it happens a lot in this world sadly as it is and I strongly urge anybody that's in relationship like that to get help because it's just it's a tragedy really and um, Celeste more trying to you know have a safe plan for her getting her house um, getting an apartment ready for her boys and she was just never quite sure if she was gonna pull the trigger on that and you know Perry found out and it was horrible and I just really felt for Celeste I really love Celeste and her growth and she was an amazing character overall and then Jane let's talk about Jane you know Jane's got this huge secret behind her about Ziggy's father about who he is and all this stuff and we learned that it's Perry's cousin I was like oh man that sucks I could see the violence going in with the family you know because Perry's violent and then he learned pretty much everything he 
learned from his cousin who did that to Jane, which was horrible. A horrible thing happened to Jane. Like, oh my gosh. And with that whole, let's talk about that huge plot twist at the end when, you know, Perry finally saw Jane and Jane said, I thought I'd run into you, Saxon Banks. And you, were you like me? Were you expecting that? I was not expecting that. I was like, holy crap. Crap. I can't believe that that was him that he was using his cousin's name and that he you know pretty much he cheated on his wife I was like oh crap they're the same age he cheated on his wife with that one and um, I was like oh, that's oh gosh Perry what a jerk and that whole plot twist was just insane that was so well written I was truly shocked I couldn't believe it I was like oh my goodness and then the whole thing at the end with the killing of Perry with Bonnie Bonnie the sweet like you don't really pay any attention really to Bonnie Bonnie's a great stepmother she's you know into yoga she's into the granola thing which is awesome and she's into like peace and the one that's so like peaceful like loses it and pushes him of course you know unintentionally to kill him because you learn that she had parents and her dad used to um, hurt her mother and she was on the offering of that and this book just shows like you know how violence can affect us especially you know as kid with Bonnie we see that you know Bonnie had these parents and this mom and this dad who would hurt her mom and she would go hide on the covers and, and she decided to grow up and be peaceful and you know non-argumentative because of that thing in her and you see how it's affected her and then you have you know um the twins one of the boys max who was beating who was um bullying amabella is that her name i don't know and you see that even though he never saw really maybe he maybe he did see that perry used to hit that hit celeste and that trickled down and then you know you have ziggy who was also perry's son and you worry about ziggy could he have that violent tendency because of his dad that cousin and you're just like all this violence trickles down and it just really shows you to it's just it shows you how much that people are perceptive about things how things happen and it's just it's so it's it's insane that like that whole thing like really opened my eyes to like you know about you know that people in relationships that are you know get physically violent how it really affects their kids it affects them but it also really affects their kids even if the kids don't see it it'll affect them you know and either way it's a horrible thing but oh, it's just insane and then Madeline Madeline had the lighter of all the stories you know with her daughter and her daughter wanting to be with um, her dad more and I felt for Madeline I really did you know um, Madeline was a little bit harsh on Bonnie and stuff she was you know at the end Bonnie's like you just need to forgive him and you need to let it go and I was like she does she just needs to forgive it and let it go and you know, the only thing I can think of is Abigail was 14 years old. She's just going to do stuff and the whole auctioning stuff. <sighs> Girl's crazy. I felt like all of these characters really growed by the end of the book. I really like all of them. They all for each different reasons, but that just twist at the end. It's crazy. So this book really did good on hitting hard, hitting topics. You, know, you got the physical violence. You got the you know abusive relationships you have the whole ex-husband thing going on with the daughter that wants to be with the ex-husband more and all that kind of stuff and i just i i liked it i really liked it it's one of my favorite books but needless to say i really liked it the other day and the other day i really enjoyed reading it so yeah that's all i'm going to talk about i feel like this video is way too long but if you have read this book please let me know what you thought of it i would love to know be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and i will talk to you guys later bye